Hello and welcome. In this training, I'll be showing you and guiding you how to work on the setup section of this template. Remember in the previous walkthrough video I did, we went through all the sections, but not in detail. And I promise that I'll be doing a detailed video on each of the section. And this section is the setup section. I'll be looking at it in detail, right? So my name is Amaka Ifebunando, the Excel coach, and it's nice having you here. So before we continue, help me to hit the subscribe button on this channel and also the notification bell, right? Thank you for that. So for you to start using this template, the first thing you need to do is to set up your business and set up a lot of items that uh, will help you maximize the benefit of this template. So the first thing is to go to the setup section. For us to get to that section, you use this thumbnail, right? Just click on this and it gets you to the setup section. So we click on this thumbnail, the setup thumbnail, and we get to the setup section. So you have the information, your business name, which you will impute here. So here you have account type grouping key. This is just to give you a guide on how we will set our chart of account. So we'll be setting up the chart of account and also the financial line or the budget line. Now, the chart of account is what guides the organization in preparing their final account, like income and expenditure, because this is NGO and maybe a statement showing the financial statement, like the balance sheet, you know, key items that need to be displayed and uh, reported. So it is important to understand the business, understand the nature of the business, and also use that to develop the chart of accounts, right? So we have the account type group in here. Assets is the, all the ones are assets. So any account code that starts with one and the account code are four digits, right? So you see the style I have here is four digits. So for the asset, it starts with one. For the liability, it starts with two. For the equity, it starts with three. For the income, four. And for the expenses, it, it spans from five, code five to code seven. So expenses mostly are large because we'll be having different, you know, categories of expenses. So you give it that uh, large range of code in order to be able to occupy the number of expense line you may definitely have. Right. So here is where we set up the chart of accounts. This is an Excel table. Because when you select it here, you will see the Excel, the table design. You see this table design future. So showing you that this is in an Excel table. So one of the good things with Excel table is that as you keep imputing this future, it will keep updating because we definitely use this particular column as a drop-down uh, validation list in the transaction section. We use this, right? So as you keep imputing information here based on the need of your business and the nature of your business, it will be updating. Have that in mind. And if you want to delete any code you feel it's not relevant to you, so you can just select. You can see this arrow, how it's pointing. And sure, when you hover, let this arrow come out, you select. So you notice that it's just selecting the arrow. Then you right click and you say delete. Now it's saying delete table rows. So this is table rows we want to delete. So this table rows has to come and the option has to be up if you want to delete a table row. So it's telling you you are deleting a table row, not just a row, but just the table row. Meaning that other item, other information on this row will be there. Can't you can see this is row 14. So if we are to delete this now, let me just give an example. I will right click and I say delete table row. So you notice that all these things are not deleted. But if you have selected the entire row, you will definitely delete all this and alter it. So that's why I say you should pay attention. Let me just undo. Then to select the rule, ensure this particular cursor. So you can see the cursor is there. Then you just select. That means it's just the table rule you are that deleting. Right. So this is something you need to have in mind. So having understood the, the grouping, how our account, chart of account will be grouped, you go ahead and design your chart of account. So for the 4,000, we see it's income. So we have our income from donor. And it's important that I state that the Account name should be descriptive. It should be descriptive. There should not be things like other income, other expenses, right? It should be descriptive in order to um, 
inform whoever that is looking at that account name from seeing it, you know what that expense is all about or what that account uh, is all about. You know, you understand from just looking at the description or the account name, you can easily infer on what the transaction is all about. All right. So you have the income from donor. So you notice that all the four is having the account type income. Now, this account type column, because the chart of account is just three columns. We have the account code, account name, and account type. This account type column is very key. Now, you're going to be preparing your income and expenditure account. It's important we have this account type. So immediately you put your account code. You already know that the account type assets is one. The account type. So these are the account type grouping. So what is the account type for four? It's income. So you have to impute income. So imagine you have four here and you and you come here and you say liability. It's going to impact on your final reporting. So this account type here is very important while designing your chart of account. So ensure it captures the right account type because whatever you impute as your account type is what will be presented in your report. So you have the 5,000 which falls on the expenses. So 5,000 to 7,000 code is expense. So we have program input costs. Now, for the program input costs, you can have different expense line for your program activity. For the purpose of guiding you on how this template works, I just used one line called it program input costs, meaning that any expense that is directly impacting on the beneficiaries of the program should go to the program input costs. Now, for you, you may have lines for training. You may have lines for uh, stakeholders allowances. It's okay, right? Just for you to, this is not a cast on stone, but just have the idea on how to go about it. Then we have electricity. We have uh, number 6,000 is electricity cost. Uh, 6,001 is bank charges, then staff costs. So you can see that from five down to six, all the, all the account type is worth expense. So always ensure that your account type is accurate. Just emphasizing it so that you know the importance of it because this will impact on the final report, right? So you go down, you have your one. And remember, the one here is assets. So definitely 1,000 office equipment is fixed assets. 1,101 vehicles is fixed assets, right? So if you're working with an accrual business, some person, some of some finance professionals will just post it directly to the, the program uh, input cost, right? Just you quote it. But mind you that this is not the donor reporting code. This is the donor reporting code. This is your organization chart of account. And for you, it's important you capture expense as expense. Whatever that is an asset, capture it as assets. So let's say office equipment, there's a project that is on board. We need to buy laptop for the staff, right? Because it has been budgeted in this particular budget. We don't need to now go and expense it directly because this is an asset. We need to capture it as an asset. So have that in mind. Right. Then you have motor vehicles. So we have approved grants where motor vehicles need to be bought. Right. So when you expense it and those assets are still existing, even after the end of the grant, your financial statement might not be presenting the true nature of the business. So this is why it's important to know how to go about it. So we are setting up this so that we can capture all the account type, the standard way it ought to be. Then definitely you can expense it directly to the financial line on the approved budget. But when we get there, you'll understand. Right, so you notice that all the one we have here is here is fixed assets. We can see all the ones from this point to this point. So we have fixed assets, we have current assets. So all the ones are assets. It can be fixed assets, just as we have here, assets. It can be fixed assets, it can be current assets, but they are all assets. Right. So you have the EZ Bank, you have the petty cash, you have the debtors and prepayments, advance to staff when you give staff advance right and they have to retire so you when we are when we are looking at the transaction section and how to impute transaction definitely we'll, we'll pick up an example to show how this works right so these are all assets type account right then the next is a 2000 you have the creditors and accruers you have 2001 tax liability withholding 
So if you're working in the NGO sector, you know that it's important you deduct these elements from vendors, service providers, suppliers, based on the contract term and remit to the relevant tax authority. The same thing with the staff payee. So this needs to be tracked. So subsequently, as we go ahead, we'll see how we can make input on this. So notice that all the two have the account type liabilities, can be current liability or non-current liability. Now, remember our two is liability, one is asset. So our three is equity, just as we have here. Three is surplus or DVC. I call it surplus or DVC because this is a non-profit organization. So it's either you are running deficit or you have a surplus, right? And you just charge it to this particular account. So this is how you, this chart of account has been set up. And going through it is just to give you an idea of how to go about it. Because there are things that might be different from uh, the budget or your organization structure on how to capture this. But having gone through it in this detail format, you should know how to capture, you know, design your chart of account for that organization in which you are the finance person for that. So now we go to the financial lines. We'll come to this section. Well, let's look at the financial line. The financial line is different from the chart of account. We can call this the budget lines or financial line. Now here we got this particular line from the approved budget. Mind you, this is a budget performance manager, meaning that there is an approved budget we are trying to work with, we are trying to manage, right? This template is easing the task on managing the performance of a budget, right? Especially for non-governmental organizations. So we capture all the financial lines on our budgets here. Right. So to get those financial lines, mind you, this is also a table, as you can see. So for you to get those financial lines, all you need to do is just to go to the budget section. You click on it. Now, these are the financial lines. You can see it's the budget line is tagged here. So you just pick all the lines that have, you know, this description. This is like the resort area, personnel cost. So these are all the budget lines under personnel. And these are the lines we want to report to for every expense, right? So you can just copy it, you know, copy it and back to your setup section. You can come here and paste it. And when you are done, right? So we have it here. Just paste it as value so that it will not paste those formats, right? So you can do the same thing for, let's go back to the budget. You can do the same thing for this section, or you can just copy everything. Let's just copy all through to this end. Control C, and we head back to the setup section, and you just paste. Paste as values, right? So our code is starts with uh, uh, two letters, then four, you know, digits number, right? So it has like six numbers, two digits with alphanumeric, right? So you notice that we have some resort area. We don't need the resort area. You can just, you know, delete delete the result area. So if I click delete, I'll say shift the cell up so that it will just shift the next cell up. So this result area, we don't need, we just need the financial line, not the result area. So you can just delete and shift the cell up because it's from your budget, definitely you're picking this. Delete and shift the cell up. So this setup you're doing is just once and for all. So that's why it's important you take your time and shift up. You take your time to just do a neat work, right? Delete, uh, shift cells up and click OK. I think we are good to go. So this is an empty cell. So you can just delete that and shift the cells up, right? So when you are done, you can just, you know, just copy, All right? So you can just say, I copy this and here I can just alt ESV, alt ESV and just paste it as value. So the alt ESV just to paste it as value or you can just um, control C and you know how to paste it as value. Let me just show you that. You come here and you go to your home tab and you have it as this paste as value, so right? So that's it, you just paste it as value. So having shown you that, we can just delete this. We don't need this again, right? We can just delete it. Good. So mind you that having, we have this code here. So this is showing to twice. And this is where I'll show you how to delete. I'll show you again how to delete a row in a table. So mind you, this is, a, this is an Excel table. So you can see we have two, financial line that looks like so you just select remember i told you just select immediately that arrow pops up select it right click and delete table row that's it that's it so notice that we have additional lines that is not on our budget 
the last financial line on our budget is this IDC indirect cost, right? That's the last financial line. So if you go back to the setup, you will notice that we have this line. These lines were just created because when you are you're building a template like this, a lot of things, you have to look at the end goal. So we need to report for funds that are coming in. You understand? We need to report for funds because it's not on the budget. What is on the approved budget is more of expense line. So we want to report for every fund coming in for this budget. We want to report for every item of withholding that will be charged to this budget. We also want to report every item of staff pay that will be charged to this budget, every item of staff pension. So that's why I included this particular custom code to this financial line. So as we go ahead, you understand how this particular additions will work. So there will be no much uh, uh, explanation that might drive home the point here. But as we go ahead, you understand and appreciate why we needed to capture this so that in our reporting, we can have a better view of all the uh, withholding, payee, pension that is not yet claimed. You will see that on the dashboard and this is how we come about it. And we also have financial lines here that will capture it, right? So this is it. So for these items here, you have this transaction type. We put up this in order to create a drop down list on the transaction section, and this also for the on the transaction. So all these items, all the setup you are seeing here will help us in capturing data on the transaction section. So you can see the project code, you can see the transaction type, payment receipt. You can see it's a drop down. So we use that information here to create the drop down list here. So that is what it is for. Then the AZ code is what you know you see here. You see the bank code, AZ code. So we just imputed that code. So basically, this is all you need to know regarding setting up the budget you're managing using the budget performance manager, right? So that's all for this uh, section of this template. In the next video, we'll be looking at the transaction section, right? So thank you for staying true. So if you've gotten value from this, please give this a like, hit the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload value tip. And I will advise you to share with as many that you know this template will help enhance their productivity and also help them with their job right. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next section of the training. Bye.